Space travel used to be a very difficult task that was carried out by space agencies. Today, things have changed quite a bit. In recent times, billionaires have traveled to space simply because they can afford to do so. But what does Neil deGrasse Tyson have to say about all these billionaires traveling to space? Continue watching to find out. First up, what does Neil have to say about billionaires rushing to space? In a recent interview, Tyson had a lot to say about the recent journeys that billionaires took to outer space. One of the things he pointed out was that he wanted the public to reconsider what the word space really meant. So, when Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos launched William Shatner into space, was it really space? He asked us to consider just how far we think William Shatner traveled. To make matters easier, Tyson asked you to imagine a globe of the Earth that is used in classrooms. If you placed two dimes on the surface of it, the thickness would be the distance William Shatner traveled to space. This distance is also equal to the distance between Washington, D.C. and New York. He added, I can't call that space. In comparison, the International Space Station can be found around one centimeter from the surface of that globe. But what did Shatner have to say about his experience? According to him, everything he had thought of was wrong. He went on to explain that he had assumed he would travel into outer space and see all the beauty that was out there. However, it's when he was up there that he realized that the tiny planet we all call home was the only beauty he cared for. Upon landing on Earth, he told Bezos, what you have given me is the most profound experience. I hope I never recover from this. While he may have have not traveled that far. The experience had a great impact on him. To be considered space travel, you should be in outer space. Moving on, which billionaires made it into space? While Elon Musk has yet to travel into space himself, his company, SpaceX, made history when it launched four private passengers into space. The crew would go on to spend almost three days in orbit around the Earth before returning with a splash in the Atlantic Ocean. This wouldn't be the first time that private passengers traveled into space, but it is the first time that there were no professional astronauts on board. In July 2021, Richard Branson, British billionaire and founder of Virgin Group, traveled 50 miles above the New Mexico desert in a Virgin Galactic rocket plane. In that plane, Branson returned safely in the vehicle's first flight to space, something he's been working towards for the last 17 years. Only eight days after Branson, Bezos made a short journey to space in the first crewed flight of his new rocket, named the New Shepard. Bezos and the three other flight members traveled into space for 10 minutes and 10 seconds in total, after which the capsule touched back down on Earth. As we can see, space travel seems to be very easy for the wealthy. The wealthiest men in the world have all managed to successfully build working rockets and traveled some distance upwards in them. Even the members who traveled into space with these billionaires are no different. Oliver Damon is now the youngest man to ever be in space at just 18 years old. How did that happen? His father paid $28 million for one seat on the flight. In short, if you have the money, why not use it for joy? rides into space. Coming up, why did these billionaires fly up in the first place? Many of you may be wondering, when did billionaires become interested in space travel? Most countries have space agencies that are working towards improving space travel and research. In the US, NASA has always been the leading facility working towards space research. The billionaires claim that it's because they were so fascinated with space that they decided to travel to it. But we know that these men are primarily businessmen, who saw an opportunity that has been left vastly unexplored. While they have yet to explain what it is they hope to achieve. Space tourism seems to be their goal. Like most entrepreneurs, these billionaires have been looking around for new ways to earn money. All of them have successful companies that are worth billions, but they have been looking for new ventures. Space tourism will offer them a unique way to earn money, just like Oliver Damon. Many others will be able to travel into space if they come from rich families. Branson's company plans to charge its passengers around a quarter of a million dollars for a suborbital trip into space for those who can afford to do so. Next up was each mission really damaging to the environment, the space tourism industry could become the number one reason to increase global warming, according to new studies. This is particularly scary now that billionaires are all competing to make space tourism a reality as soon as possible. The study focused on the emissions of the spacecraft, such as black carbon and soot that are released from the fuel. Black carbon is particularly scary because when it is released, it absorbs the light from the sun and gives out large amounts of heat, which makes it one of the biggest factors to increase temperatures. When a spacecraft takes off, this black carbon is also released into the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere and doesn't come back down to the surface for four years at a time. In fact, 
black carbon is 500 times more damaging in the atmosphere than it is near the surface of the Earth. If the space tourism sector grows significantly, the black carbon emissions could prove to be really deadly for us all. If the billionaires do succeed and give rise to the space tourism industry, then things may become a lot worse. The public too has never really thought of space exploration as being important enough to spend money on and feels the same way about the billionaires' efforts. There are various parts of our planet still unexplored. It is advisable that the space tourism industry should be regulated before things are entirely out of our control. In other related news, is today's space race really just a vanity project? That's what it seems like to the skeptics. One of the biggest criticisms that the billionaires faced when attempting to travel to space was that this was all for fame, and that they could have applied all that money towards other projects that could have greatly benefited the Earth and its people. Despite space research's applications benefiting the people of the Earth, many people are still unconvinced. Why not spend all those resources investigating what lies in the ocean? How is it that we know more about space than about the water that covers the majority of the Earth? Sounds like the public has a point. Next, what was Elon Musk thinking when he shot his car into space? What did Elon Musk gain by sending his sports car into space? The rocket released all those chemicals and fumes into the Earth's atmosphere, all for a marketing stunt, so that Elon Musk could show the world that he has the power to send a rocket into space and the money to afford to do so? But that's not all they did. SpaceX also achieved what no one else had when they launched a rocket upright after taking off and returning. You have to give SpaceX the credit for that, surely. However, space research has almost always benefited the public. Just like cars and mobiles were once seen as luxuries with no real benefit, space research is no different. In fact, as more private companies enter the space race, economists believe that the cost will drop as supply increases. Let's not forget, even airplanes exist thanks to private endeavors. Finally, William Shatner was unnerved by his travel into space. While he may have led people to believe that he was very happy to have made the trip with Bezos, he has now expressed that it was a dark experience. In his book, Boldly Go, Reflections on a Life of Awe and Wonder, Shatner, who is most famous for his role as Captain Kirk in Star Trek, wrote that he was profoundly sad during his space travel. According to him, he loves the mystery surrounding the universe, and it's thrilling to think about, but he didn't feel thrilled or excited when he was in the shuttle, moving away from Earth. Instead, the darkness surrounding him reminded him of nothing but death. At 91, Shatner became the oldest person to travel to space. He has described space as a cold, dark, black emptiness that is like nothing on Earth. He didn't stop there. He went on to explain that the trip that was meant to be a celebration eventually ended up feeling like a funeral. He believes that those moments are some of the saddest he has ever experienced in his life. The stark difference between the unending, cold, and dark space and the warm and full of life Earth filled him with grief. What do you have to say about the billionaire space race? Do you think it will be beneficial to the human race, or is it simply nothing more than a waste of money? Let us know in the comments below. Until then, thank you for watching.